Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your 8x7.5 foot outdoor shed. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with the shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the comments or description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your shed comes on a pallet which is in two boxes, so let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require three people, so be sure to have at least two other adults available. Before we begin, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, a 3 8 wrench, adjustable wrench, a rubber mallet, a box cutter, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, a ladder, a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. A 5 16 drill bit and a 5 16 masonry drill bit. To make this easier, we're going to use a socket adapter a 7 16 socket, a 3 16 socket, channel locks, and a Phillips bit. All lifetime sheds require a platform to be built on. We recommend building one out of concrete, but you can also build one from lumber. It's crucial that you refer to your assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation, so refer to your assembly manual for section one. Line up the holes in the connector with the holes in the gutter channel. Using the hardware, secure the connector and the gutter channels together. Tighten the hardware, but be sure not to over tighten. Line the truss brace up with the holes in the two gutter channels. Secure the truss brace to the gutter channels with the hardware. Be sure not to over tighten. When adding the hardware, make sure that the screw goes on the inside of the gutter channel and the cap nut goes on the outside. Insert the truss rod into the center of the truss and secure with the cap nuts. You'll know the truss rod is tight when you can't move it. Repeat the previous steps for a second truss. Take the two gable halves that don't have a curve at the bottom, line up the holes, and secure with the hardware. Line the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent. 
Secure the vent to the gable with the hardware. Grab the square tube that doesn't have these two holes. Insert an end cap into each end. Take the square tube from the previous step, make sure the dimples are facing down and align it with the holes on the gable. Secure the square tube to the gable with the hardware. Bring the other two halves of the gables together, line up the holes, and secure with the hardware. Align the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent, then place on the outside of the gable and secure with the hardware. Add an end cap to each end of the square tube. Add the square tube to the gable, making sure that the round dimpled holes are facing down and the square dimpled hole is facing towards you. Start by adding the hardware to the middle two holes. Secure the rest of the square tube to the gable with the hardware. Now take a square tube and slide it into the bottom of the door, but before you do, make sure that the holes line up with these holes on the door. Leave about six inches hanging out from the bottom and insert your end cap. Then push the tube the rest of the way in. Now attach the left door latch bracket to these holes with the hardware. Now using the provided drill bit, draw out the two holes at the bottom and top of the door. You will be going through the metal in the underlying pole, so make sure that your drill is at the highest torque setting and fully charged. Add the spacer over the holes we just drilled out. Since we're at the bottom of the door, you want to make sure that you can read the word down. Then add your lock, making sure that it says number two, and secure with the hardware. Repeat the previous step for the top of the door, making sure that your spacer says up and that the lock has the number one on it. Now add the back of the handle to the front of the handle. Now attach the handle to the door with the hardware. Okay. 
Slide the hinge tube into the other side of the door until there's only a few inches hanging out from the bottom. Place the butyl tape in a small groove along the edge of the window. Remove the plastic from both sides of the window pane. Place the window pane over the butyl tape, making sure that the holes in the window pane line up with the divots on the door. Now secure with the hardware. Add the square tube into the bottom of the right door using the same method as the left door. Leave a few inches of the tube hanging out so that you can add the end cap. Then push the tube the rest of the way up. Secure the tube to the door through the divot at the bottom of the door. The screw is designed to go through the metal in the underlying pole. Attach the latch hardware to the door. Be sure to follow along. Connect the two halves of the handle together, then secure to the door with the hardware. Slide the hinge tube into the door on the other side until there's only a few inches hanging out. Now attach the window using the same method as before. Connect the inner floor panel to the outer floor panel by lifting one side up, interlocking the tabs, and laying it back down. Repeat this step for the other outer floor panel. Decide which 8-foot side you want the door on. We're going to put our door on this 8-foot side, so place the bushings in these holes. Make sure the slits in the bushing face the front of the shed. On the edges of the panel, there's divots. Connect the panels together by inserting the screws through those divots.
on all five wall panels, add a wall support channel, making sure that the end with two holes is at the top, just to the left of the cutout at the top of the wall panel. Line up the holes and secure with the hardware. Add the short wall support channel to the wall panel that has a window, making sure that when you add the hardware, you do it at an angle. Take a corner wall panel labeled AGY and add a wall support channel making sure that the two holes on the end are at the top and secure it with the hardware on the right edge. Repeat the previous step for the corner wall panel labeled AGN except you're going to add it to the left side, making sure that the two holes on the wall support channel are at the end. Since our doors are going to go right here, you're going to need the corner wall panel labeled AGY in this corner. Start by taking the tabs at the bottom of the wall panel and putting them into these cutouts. Now kick or tap the wall panel over so that it locks into place. I'm comfortable kicking the wall panel with my foot, but if you're not comfortable with that, take a piece of wood and a rubber mallet and tap it over. To secure the other side, push the wall panel out, fold the panel over, align the tabs and the cutouts, and then apply downward pressure until you hear it click into place. Add the next two wall panels, inserting the tabs into the cutouts and then sliding it to the right to lock them into place. Make sure the neighboring wall panel goes behind the previous panel and then line up the holes and secure with the hardware. Add the corner wall panel labeled AGW into this corner using the same method as the first corner wall panel. Secure the corner wall panel to the neighboring wall panel with the hardware. Add the next two wall panels using the same method as before. Add the corner wall panel labeled AGL to this corner and attach it using the same method as before. Add the window wall panel and another regular wall panel using the same method as before.
Add the corner wall panel labeled AGN to this corner using the same method as the other corner panels. The shelf brackets go into these cutouts here. Decide how high you want your shelf to be and insert the brackets on the same cutout. Now grab your shelf and fold the tabs up on both sides. Make sure that these notches here go up against the wall. Secure the shelf to the walls through the tabs and also through the shelf brackets on the bottom. With the help of another person, slide the hinge tube of the left door into the bushing, making sure that the holes line up with the slot on the bushing. Slide the cotter pin through the bushing and the hinge tube and flare the ends to lock it into place. Repeat the previous step for the other door. Take the gable with the curve in it and slide the hinge tubes in the holes and secure to the corner wall panels. Now attach the gap flaps to the top corner of the doors. Take a truss and insert it into the notches at the top of the front wall panels. Take a roof panel and slide it into the truss and onto the gable. You'll know the roof panel is in the correct spot when the alignment nub is in this notch right there. Secure the roof panel to the wall panel through these holes. In preparation for the next step, you're going to secure the gable to the roof panel through these two holes. Now add your roof support, making sure that the end with a hole goes in the gable side. Now finish securing the rest of the roof panel to the trusses and gable. Now add a roof panel on the opposite side using the same method as before.
Add a truss and two roof panels using the same method as before. With the help of two other people, lift the rear cable onto the back wall and secure with the hardware. Now add the final two roof panels to the rear gable and the truss using the same method as the front gable. Next we're going to add the roof cap, but the roof has a modified tongue and groove system and it'll look like this once you have it up on the roof. Now we're going to add the skylight panel onto the roof peak, fold the skylight in half so that it fits through the skylight hole and then secure with the hardware. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware. Place your wall hooks throughout the shed in these notches. Peel the plastic on both sides of the window. Orient the window like this and slide it into the grooves on the window.
With the window all the way down, insert the screw into the small hole at the bottom. Attach the window latches to these holes here, making sure it's oriented like this and that it slides freely. If your doors aren't level, follow this link to see how to properly align your doors. This section will go over the steps on how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation, so refer to your instruction manual on how to do that. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your 8 by 7.5 foot lifetime outdoor shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.